Supreme Court don't they hear PDP article appeal against President Buhari's election today. House of Reps don't reject military's operation positive identification exercise. I nego joint body with agencies where they fight corruption sake of vote buying. Again, gunmen don't kidnap Catholic Reverend Father inside Enugu. And for sports, President Buhari don't hail golden eaglets of Nigeria sake of their win against Ecuador for the under-17 World Cup inside Brazil. My people, on a good afternoon this afternoon, and thank you, say you the part of the news as it take happen. My name, Naina Douglas. The presidential candidate of the People's Democratic Party, Atiku Abubakar and in party will be the People's Democratic Party, PDP, don't ask the Supreme Court, say, make them take six interlocutory appeals before their main appeal. Their lead counsel, Levi Uzuku San, now make the prayer for the resumed hearing of their appeal, where they bring come the highest court as they challenge the decision of the presidential election tribunal, where they declare President Muhammad Buhari winner of the last presidential election. The six interlocutory appeals then divide them into two. One, to challenge the striking out of some paragraphs of their appeal by the tribunal, and also two, to challenge the many paragraphs for the reply. The hearing for Supreme Court starts exactly 10 minutes after 9 in the morning, when the seven-man judges will be saying that the Chief Justice of Nigeria, Justice Tanko Mohamed, lead them enter the courtroom. Other people will show face for court, now the national chairman of the two parties, the All Progressive Congress, Adams Oshomole, and PDP's Uche Secondus. Former chairman of the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission will be the will be card carrying member of APC, Nuhuri Badu, among other big, big politicians we will get for this country. And for the next story, President Muhammadu Buhari want to make Senate confirm the appointment of Dr. Pius Odubu as chairmo for the Niger Delta Development Commission, what they call NDDC. President Buhari also want to make the upper chamber confirm Bernard Okumaba as managing director, engineer Otobong Ndem as executive director, projects, Maxwell Oku as executive director, finance and admin, and 12 other appointees as state representatives for the commission. This one day inside one later, we then sent to Senate President Ahmed Lawan when he later read for the floor of the Senate for plenary on Tuesday. He come back, the lawmaker say, may they give all the necessary support we will allow the smooth screening and confirmation of these people where Oga Buhari don't appoint so. Now, so Senate come refer the letter to the committee where they in charge of NDDC, just as he give them one week to report back. For another letter where the Senate president read, President Buhari also requests to make Senate confirm the appointment of three resident electoral commissioners that is REC for INEC. Dear distinguished Senate President, confirmation of appointments of the Board of Niger Delta Development Commission, NDDC, in accordance with the provision of Section 2, Subsection 2A of the Niger Delta Development Commission, NDDC Establishment Act 2000, I write to forward for confirmation by the Senate of the Federal Republic of Nigeria the underlisted nominees for appointment into the NDDC Board to occupy the positions indicated against their names. The nominees' CVs are attached herewith. One, Dr. Pius Odubu, Edo State, Chairman. Two, Bernard O. Okumagba, Delta, Managing Director. Three, Engineer Otobong Indem, Akwaibom, Executive Director, Projects. Four, Maxwell Oko Bayelsa, Executive Director, Finance and Administration. Five, Prophet Jones Eroe, Delta, Delta Rep. Six, Chief Victor Ehato, Edo, Edo Rep. That's representative. Seven, Dr. Joe Imebi Nunye, Rivers, Rivers representative. Eight, 
Umogu and Umogu, Abia, Abia representative. Nine, Theodore A. Allison Baelsa, Baelsa representative. Ten, Victor Antai, Akwaibom, Akwaibom representative. Eleven, Maurice Effuat, Cross River, Cross River representative. Twelve, Olubenga Edema, Ondo, Ondo representative. Thirteen, Onobu Uchegbu, Chidia Bere, Kirian, Imo, Imo representative. Fourteen, Aisha Murtala Muhammad Kanu, Northwest representative. Fifteen, Shuaibu Arto Zubairu Adamawa, Northeast representative. And sixteen, Ambassador Abdullahi M. Bage, Nasarawa, North Central representative. While hoping that the Senate will consider and confirm the nominees in the usual expeditious manner, please accept the Sungu Senate President the assurances of my highest consideration, yours sincerely, Muhammadu Buhari. The Senate also refer Mr. President's request to the committee where they're in charge of INEC and make them report back in one week. Meanwhile, Senate again don't shift their plenary for one week to allow committee finish work on top of budget defense of ministries, departments, and agencies. Senate President Ahmed Lawan now announced this one on Tuesday for plenary. He can talk say Tuesday and the last day for, the, for MDAs to defend their budget proposal to give room for different committees to present their report before the appropriation committee. Senator Lawan talks say this exercise will conclude by December 5. 2019. Uh, let me first of all commend all our committees, the single senators, for the wonderful work that we have been doing on the budget defense in the last two weeks. We have shown commitment, we have shown dedication and capacity to discharge our responsibilities very patriotically for the love of our country. Our committees have worked in some cases with sister committees from the House of Representatives. In some other cases, the committees work simultaneously in the House and the Senate. But we have done so wonderfully well so far we have almost finished the budget defense. Today will be the last day for budget defense, and therefore this plenary session will not take long. We will adjourn to enable our committees to conclude in their budget defense today, and also for our subcommittees to start forwarding and defending their budgets, forwarding their reports, to the Committee on Appropriation and Defending from tomorrow before the Senate Committee on Appropriations. And that exercise, that process will last for one week. We start from tomorrow, the Budget Defense before the Committee on Appropriations and conclude on the 5th of November by the grace of God. That's a period of one week. And within that period, we will not hold plenary so that we have the entire time, the full time for us to conclude work on the budget. So with this, I want to commend all of us here for doing so well. It has been quite remarkable. And I believe that uh, going forward, our, our subcommittees, the subcommittees on, uh, uh, of appropriation will also be able to finish the budget defense before the Committee on Appropriations by Tuesday uh, next week. That will be the fifth. On November. Delta Affairs, Gosul Akwabio talks say the power to tamper with budget estimate of the country rests only for the hand of National Assembly people. Them. Akwabio will serve as minority leader for the 8th Senate. He and this one on Monday, on Monday, shortly after the budget defense session with the Senate Committee on Top Niger Delta. 
that uh, because we're working with excellent circulars and all that, that the only people who have the right to tamper with the budget remain the National Assembly, not the, not the ministers who, who submitted. Because, of course, after Mr. President has signed off and submitted to the National Assembly, only the National Assembly has the power by law to tamper with anything. And they will do so within a certain threshold so that the budget will not be distorted. And the mission and the vision of Mr. President will still be realized. And of course, they have those powers, and they will do so. Yeah. But as a minister, you cannot do it. I probably will talk this one sake of the request last week by Peter Nwaboshi led Senate Committee to allow the ministry rework the budget estimates so that it will reflect the reality of things inside the oil-rich region. We get plenty projects we never complete, and many others we then don't abandon. Still on top National Assembly matter, House of Representatives don't ask President Muhammadu Buhari say, make it sharply cancel the Operation Positive Identification Exercise with the military they plan to do across Nigeria. For one motion way House Minority Leader Ndudi Elumelu raised as matter of urgent public importance, the lawmaker can the express worry say the exercise will put fear for the hearts of Nigerians. Honorable Elumelu also maintains say, the operation will remove freedom of movement of Nigerians where the constitution don't guarantee, plus including tension and panic everywhere. The lawmaker talks say, the nationwide operation and another strategy by the army to bring state of emergency across Nigeria. The House for the Agreement talks say, the committee on top army go meet with the chief of army staff to get proper and clear understanding of the reason for the operation. Okay, for the next one, one dialogue, one dialogue on top public policy implications of aggregate income and wealth inequalities in Nigeria. That is the one where we say the rich, they get richer and the poor, they get poorer. We be saying that the Center for Public Alternatives organized, they go on now inside Abuja. The public dialogue, now to check the wide gap between the rich and rich people and poor people, just as they try to bring solutions to extreme poverty. The dialogue will also look what government fit to do to build the country where everybody will get equal opportunity for social justice. But right now, make we join our correspondent, Ene Okun, for the venue of the dialogue. Ene, good afternoon this afternoon. Good afternoon, Ene, this afternoon. Yes. Uh, what do you think give us about the update of the dialogue where they happen now? The dialogue where they happen. The dialogue where they happen now. And we come to you now. We are joined by the call uh, Center for Public Policy Authority and uh, some other job that are included to the people. So there is as now. We see how they will fit uh, Jija government and uh, Nigerian people. Maybe they take matter concerning uh, health and education seriously. Because they believe say if Nigerian people they, they don't get education and their body they can't be, they will fit, we need to contribute uh, the big education since they will fit help our country better. And uh, they come to the and say to this young race of people get from the area and some people they very, very poor to even check the days of Nagahama. Say you don't need for the country. So they will try to see how they will fit the so, so that poverty will be from the country to reduce, make everybody be a better life. And the country that they do is say, this one will be the blame government every time, government, 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 government. It may be that Nigerian people too, they get their own way to play to make the country better. Not just the only thing for government. Let them too, they will keep quiet. If they say no bad thing, if they see things, they will be able to do. Let them be talking. Let them be without government for government. Yes, so let them too, they will sit up. They even they 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 say this one they look at things for telling people again to be blue. It may be let them too, they follow the drive. They talk, the government understands it. It's a pretty good thing for people. Thank you, Anna, for that one. Thank you for the update. Okay. Meanwhile. FCT Minister Be uh, Mohamed Bello don't tell financial institutions and business credit and business credit providers say so may them give loan facilities to upcoming business people to help them grow their business and contribute their quota to the development of the Nigerian economy. The minister will talk this one on Tuesday when he declared open the second proudly Nigeria Expo 
talk say FCT administration done ready to provide the right space for business people to make them. Our correspondent, John Emmanuel, get more on this one. They've organized this trade fair to showcase products where Nigerians and Nigerian companies they manufacture for we country. FCT Minister Manla Mohamed Bello will be seen as the managing director of Abuja Enterprises Agency, where he named that Tukur Arabi come represent, talks in order to encourage Nigerians to they produce things locally so that the country go reduce the importation of goods from Obodo Ibo. FCT administration don't open one Obonge office. We go make them easy for business people to get loan and to know how they go carry do investment for the city of Abuja. The private sector can be relied upon to turn around the fortunes of our country. And I'm happy that the FCT is on the vanguard of our national economic renaissance with the organization of this fair. I also wish to assure the business community in Nigeria and outside our shores that our doors are open and we have provided an enabling environment for the establishment and sustenance of businesses in the FCT. Also, the Minister of State for FCT, Dawa Misina, she be the junior minister to the main minister, where her name na Dr. Ramatu Aliyu, and na the Director General of the FCT Emergency Management Agency, where he name na Abbas Idris, representative for the occasion. He has said FCT don't they provide infrastructure, Dawa Misina, na better, better road and light, and all everything we go encourage people to do business for inside the city. So that to encourage businessmen to co-invest for the grassroots areas of the city. Therefore, it behoves on you, the MSMEs, to be innovative, to stay relevant and be profitable. This will ensure that you will be a part of the President Muhammad Buhari next level agenda. This made the Nigerian Good and Services Trade Fair, where we said that the second time we the share for Abuja with this, be organized by the FCT administration and other private joint body organizations. This now, John Emmanuel for Wazubia Max TV. Election joint body will be the Independent National Electoral Commission, INEC, Toxi. Then go collaborate with agencies where they fight corruption to tackle vote buying during the November 16 Kogi and Bayesa governorship and rerun elections. Ainek Chamo will be Professor Mahmoud Yakubu, nine years this one on Tuesday inside Abuja for the quarterly consultative meeting with political parties inside the country. Professor Yakubu will come express concern sake of the one way vote buying done the trend, talk say the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission. EFCC don't secure conviction of one person for Gombe State, just as other suspects see they for different courts inside Nigeria. A company down the beg candidates for the election, say, make them shun hate speech and even draw the ear of their supporters against any form of katakata. The INEC Chiamo announced, say, candidates go sign peace deal ahead of the election. The commission once again appeals to political parties to speak to your candidates and supporters and to advise them against head speech, inciting statements, fiscal attacks on opponents, destruction of each other's campaign materials and other sundry violations of the Electoral Act. Of course, voter harassment, voter intimidation, including vote buying at polling units constitute violations of the Electoral Act. Prohibition of the use of mobile phones by voters in the voting cubicles is still in force. When the Yani own Chiamu of the Interparty Advisory Council, IPAC, Peter Ame, can't tell the candidates, say make them no secure votes through Begi, but make them allow for level playing ground. It is necessary that you get the right mandate from the people through the ballot box and not through gun, not through intimidation, and not through voter, uh, they call it oppression. So it is key that we continue to educate those who are the rural area that their vote will count, and that their vote is their mandate for a credible and enriching democracy in our country. 45 political parties now then go follow through the coming election inside Bayelsa State and 33 inside Kogi State. For the next story, we're no sweet belly at all at the world of crime. 
Gunmen don't kidnap one Catholic priest, Reverend Father Arinze Mado, inside Enugu State. The badness happened for Ezago local government area for the state. Reverend Mado, now the vice rector for Queen of Apostles Seminary School for the Imeziowa area of Enugu, the kidnapper went in the Idioni in way out of the premises while the kidnappers fired gunshots for up to scare people away. Meanwhile, the Enugu State Police Command confirmed the kidnap on Tuesday. According to the police talk talk person, Ebere Amarizu, the command don't already send operatives after the culprits. They give assurance, say, the command they on top of the situation, just as a talk say, the Reverend Father go regain in freedom without any injury. Reverend Mado's abduction come barely three months after they caput the priest of St. James Greater Parish Catholic Church, Oboka, Reverend Father Paul Ofu, for Enugu State. Now make we come back to Abuja. Foot bridge, where everybody know as pedestrian bridge, then designer for the safety of road users. Now structure will link two points above the ground. Then designer for the safety of pedestrian, that is people with a walk out with a crossroad instead of running across the expressway. With all these measures put in place by government to ensure safety, most Nigerians still prefer to the cross expressway instead of using this pedestrian bridge. The Deputy Director of Transport Secretariat of the Federal Capital Territory Administration, Engineer Joseph Akintaye, threw more light on the essence of using the pedestrian bridge. Our correspondent, Fidel Oseale, get more on this one. Life not get duplicate, but people where they risk their lives to cross the highway for Area 3, it be like say that one not concern them. As we did this place, so this is now the popular Area 3 junction for Abuja. Now, just behind me, you go see pedestrian bridge where they make, make people they climb, they cross for safety because they do pedestrian bridge for Nigerians for safety. But that's why I say this pedestrian bridge where they near me here, so they here, you go see, see people, they cross road, they cross the express road. And if you look this side, so they've been get barricades where they take block to ensure say people go they use the pedestrian bridge. But as you look at this barricade, so people don't even break the barricade to give them free access. And what you would they ask be say, why people go they cross this road where they're very dangerous when pedestrian bridge they are our back? So so that what you would they try to find out. See Oga, government not do much. Where the government put this uh, bridge here? We don't put them here. Nine seven people where they cross, they go dream me. They go leave each other. They go this side. Why do you put them? No, put them here. Go put that side. No, anybody go go that side. You go cross this road. This road is killing many people here because it's government fault actually. Why is government fault? Like this crossover there supposed to be here close by. It's stressing people to go far to cross. That's why people is passing through here. I use it very well. I like it. It's good. It's good. Also, I encourage others. Let them use it because to cross this express is not a good thing for people at all. People die here every day, every day on the blessed day. So the government still need to, you know, emphasize on the use of the pedestrian bridge. Plenty of people don't die on top C to use this bridge, get plenty K leg. Now you make we enter the FCDA transport department to go know what thing they feet do to make sure see country people lives they protected. If you see the bridge is where we be, be, we built, we we'll say we put mesh wire there. And so, not allow them to cross. Go to area one now. They don't take knife, shook the mesh wire for them to escape from one major road to another major road. You can see how stubborn Nigerians are. Another problem where we get, we say, our people, where they're in charge of safety, that is federal road safety. They know they do their work concerning this thing. There's one regulation where they get inside their book that says any pedestrian where they struggle with motor for road, then go find them 2,000 or you go to uh, 5,000 or you go to prison five years. They know they do that one. Now to check a uh, 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 paper for motor, nine days sabi. If for them to do that one, say, so okay, we chase people where they stop and where no one use bridge alone, it will help us a lot. But you may and you, you know, say they know they do that one, not to stop motor and check paper. Now they answer me. As the matter they be so, everybody need to join hand to make sure, say, we not put our life for danger. 
So the next time when you see the bridge, instead of saying you run across the express road, make sure say you use them because life not get duplicate. Now Fidel Usegali, the report for Wazobia Max Television. My people, still to come on as it take happen, business and sports, no go anywhere. And for the world of business, the Nigerian Customs Service don't announce say they don't seize 34 containers of rice when they smuggled through Tinkan Island port. The Controller General of Customs, Hamid Ali, now he this one for Lagos on Tuesday. He talks say they hide the rice under, can't use spare parts cover them. He say in addition to the 34 containers of rice, the service also sees 11 containers of pharmaceutical products where they no register, two containers of tires where they don't use, one container of used clothing and four containers of refined vegetable oil where they package for retail packs, bringing the total to 52 containers of seized contraband goods. Ali put the total duty paid pay for value, uh, the total duty paid value with a seize for 2.7 billion naira. He blamed the season to the recent closure of the land borders where, according by him, don't make importers of banned items to use seaports. Meanwhile, the Zone C command headquarters of the Nigerian Customs Service go to today display before newsmen some illegal items and other contrabands where they seize from smugglers. Now, so the news be, but before we go, make a summer on our waiting form our top headline. Supreme Court done the hear PDP article appeal against President Buhari's election today. House of Reps don't reject military's operation positive identification exercise. I nego join body with agencies where they fight corruption for the sake of vote buying. Again, gunmen don't kidnap Catholic Reverend Father inside Enugu. My people not as it take happen with that for today will be uh, Wednesday. My name is Nana Douglas. Thank you, say you're the part of the program. To enjoy more of this, our Ugonke videos when you just watch, press this button to subscribe on top of our YouTube page. You go love her.